Hello friends, it's October and that means it's LGBT History Month. LGBT history is a social issue that's kind of going, come, starting to develop right now and whether or not LGBT history should be taught in schools. There are some states and cities that are requiring LGBT history be taught and in my personal opinion, I think it should. One of the biggest reasons why I feel it should be taught in schools nowadays isn't even because of the LGBT students, it's actually the straight students. There are quite a few people who believe that the LGBT movement and LGBT people, whether that be gay, straight, non-binary, transgender, queer of any kind, is some sort of movement that started in the millennial generation, the 90s and early 2000s. But that is so far from the truth. We have evidence of gay couples as far back as the Egyptian time. So gay people have been around <laughs> as long as humans have. So it's not fair to treat it as if it's some new fad or trend. And hopefully that'll teach straight people that gay people have always existed. Another reason why I feel it should be taught in schools is it provides role models for gay youth. The opinion on gay and queer people are changing dramatically, especially since when I, since I was in school. But we still have a long ways to go. There are still religions, parents, people of varying backgrounds that tell these youths that being gay isn't okay, that they're not strong enough at the very, most that they should be dead. At the very least that they're just not good enough for anything. And that's not okay. There have been gay people, transgender people throughout history who've done miraculous and incredible things. But we don't learn about it. The fact that they're gay gets pushed to the sidelines and if we even mention or bring that up, we're told all we focus on is our sexuality. Which that isn't the case. These LGBT youths growing up have a right to know about the strong people who came before them that fought for their rights. People who invented incredible things that advanced our world. And we're gonna be learning a little bit about that today. And I think that part, a big major part of that for me is learning about real history. History truly is written by the winners or the people in power. And so unfortunately, we don't always learn real history. The people in power have been white. They've been male. They have been straight. And unfortunately, the stories of minorities get lost in that, and that isn't fair. And slowly that is changing, and it's definitely progress that needs to be made. Finally, learning about LGBT history creates a sense of community. One of the big things that I've noticed um, in recent years, which is a good thing, is LGBT youth are becoming more and more accepted by their families, their birth families. Which is, that's awesome. But there was a time when LGBT people, LGBT people weren't accepted. They got kicked out of their homes. Their families wanted nothing to do with them. So they had to find their own families. They had to create their own families in major cities like New York, San Francisco, and many more. When they did this, an oral history was able to be passed down through each generation of LGBT people, since most LGBT people don't give birth to the next generation, this is how their stories moved on from generation to generation. Now, as more gay individuals and queer people are being accepted by their birth families, and not just, they don't have to create chosen families, which is an unfortunate part of um, something we're losing in the LGBT community, which is which is good because that means you're being accepted by your birth family and that's great, but at the same time, that oral history isn't being transferred down between generations, which isn't good. So that means we have to find another way to teach this, and the best way to do that is in schools, when the kids need it the most, when they need that love, they need their support, they need role models, and this is the perfect way that that can happen. So for the next portion of this video, I wanted to actually go over some quick LGBT history facts that that I found online and that I've learned about actually in my education in queer studies. So without further ado, let's get started on that. When it comes to LGBT history, there's way too many sources to go over every single person and significant event in the world. So here's just a handful of some research subjects, individuals and events that relate to LGBTQ plus history. In Egypt, two male royal manicurists 
were found buried together in a shared tomb similar to the way married couples were often buried at the time. Their epigraph reads, joined in life and joined in death. Having lived in 2400 BC, they are believed to be history's oldest recorded gay couple. Though Rome has a rich history of homoerotic art and literature, their conception of same-sex relationships between men hinges around a traditional viewpoint of masculinity and femininity. Male same-sex partners were often given rights if they were considered to be the dominant partner, while the more feminine partner who took the submissive role were often slaves, prostitutes, or entertainers. In 324 BC, the Sacred Band of Thebes was a troop of select soldiers consisting of 150 pairs of male lovers, which formed an elite force of the Taliban army in the 4th century BC, ending Spartan dominance. They were a band that lasted for another 30 years undefeated. In 1776, Lieutenant Gotthold Frederick of the Continental Army became the first documented service member to be dismissed from the U.S. military for homosexuality. Between the years of 1857 to 1861, James Buchanan was elected president. A lifelong bachelor, Buchanan had a long-term relationship with William Rufus King, who served as a vice president under Franklin Pierce. The two men lived together from 1840 to 1853 until King's death. Some historians suggest Buchanan's, by today's standards, might have been gay. In 1886, Henry James writes the book The Bostonians about a long-term relationship between two women and the term Boston marriages develops to describe two women living together independent of financial support from males. In 1895, the trial of Oscar Wilde, writer and novelist in London, England, he was convicted, convicted for gross indecency due to his relationship with another man and served two years in jail. In 1924, the first gay rights group is established in America, World War II. One veteran, Henry Gerber, founded the Society of Human Rights in Chicago. The group was the first gay rights group in America, and in a newsletter, Friendship and Freedom was the United States' first recorded gay rights publication. Often overlooked, German homosexual men during the Holocaust and World War II were designated by pink triangles on their clothing. They were the last group to be released from Nazi concentration camps after the liberation by Allied forces. But because of paragraph 175 of the German Criminal Code stated that homosexual relations between males was illegal, most of these individuals, unfortunately, after being freed from concentration camps, were subsequently sent to German prisons. Between 1933 and 1945, nearly 100,000 German homosexual men were rounded up and placed in concentration camps, along with Jewish people. They were designated by the pink upside-down triangle on their clothing. Alan Turner was a mathematician who is often credited with creating the foundation of artificial intelligence and computer science. He also played a major role in World War II, helping break several German codes. In the 50s, he was told police that he had homosexual relations with a man and was arrested for gross indecency. In 1954, he died due to suicide. He was given a post-mortis royal pardon in 2013. Three years later, the UK government announced it would post-mortisly pardon other men convicted of abolished sexual offenses related to sodomy and homosexuality and what was dubbed the Turing Law. Lily Elb, Danish painter who was assigned a male at birth, experienced what is now called gender dysmorphia, 
and underwent the world's first documented sex reassignment surgery. In January 1958, the Supreme Court rules in favor of gay rights after the U.S. Post Office refused to deliver America's first widely distributed pro-gay publication, one, the homosexual magazine. The case went to the U.S. Supreme Court, and the court ruled in favor of gay rights for the first time, making it a major landmark case in LGBTQ history. In 1962, Illinois becomes the first state to decriminalize homosexual acts between two consenting adults in private. Born in 1912, Bayard Rustin was the LGBTQ and civil rights activist best known for being a key advisor to Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. He organized the 1963 March on Washington and was postmortemly awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civil honor, in 2013 for his activism. Martha P. Johnson, born in 1945, was an outspoken transgender rights activist and is reported to be one of the central figures of the historic Stonewall Uprising in 1969. Along with fellow trans activist Sylvia Rivera, Johnson helped form Street Transgender Action Revolutionaries, a radical political organization that provided housing and other forms of support to homeless queer youth and sex workers in Manhattan. On June 28, 1969, the Stonewall Riots sparked the beginning of the LGBT movement in the United States. In the early morning hours on June 28, 1969, police performed a raid of the Stonewall Inn, a New York City gay bar, and the customers and their supporters took a stand. The event turned into a violent protest and led to days-long series of riots. Those Stonewall riots are largely considered the start of the LGBT civil rights movement in the United States and the world. In 1973, homosexuality is no longer considered a mental illness. After years of studies, analysis, and changing cultural attitudes, the American Psychiatric Association's Board of Directors removed homosexuality from the official list of mental illnesses. Harvey Milk was the first openly gay politician to ever be elected in California. While on San Francisco's Board of Supervisors, Milk made a name for himself as a prominent outspoken LGBTQ activist. Eerily, Milk predicted his death by saying, if a bullet should ever enter my brain, let that bullet destroy every closet door in the country. He was assassinated in 1978 in City Hall. Also, in 1978, Harvey Milk asked his friend Gilbert Baker to make a symbol that would represent gay pride. Using the U.S. flag as inspiration, Baker hand-sewed a rainbow flag. He said each color on the flag represented something that was important to the community. The rainbow flag was the first flown in San Francisco on June 28, 1978 for Gay Pride Day. Eventually, the flag lost its hot pink stripe and indigo stripe due to, due to varying issues the flag eventually was flown all throughout the city after harvey milk's death in 1978. in 1981 cases of a rare lung infection were found in five young previously healthy gay men in los angeles at the same time, there were reports of a group of men in New York and California with unusually aggressive cancers. A group of cases among gay men in so Southern California suggested that the cause of the immune deficiency was sexual, and the syndrome was initially called Gay-Related Immune Deficiency, or GRID for short. In January 1983, AIDS was reported among females with male partners suggesting that it was passed on via heterosexual sex. Unfortunately, by that point, the news media had reported AIDS and HIV as a homosexual illness, creating a decades-long fight for knowledge, education, 
within the gay and straight community. During the presidency of Barack Obama, a handful of significant LGBT milestones were hit. Obama signed the Matthew Shepard and James Baird Jr. Act. The new law expanded previous hate crime legislation to officially categorize crimes motivated, motivated by relationships between a man and a woman. Gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, or disability as hate crimes. In 2011, Obama officially revoked the anti gay and discriminatory front and front to our policy. It prevented openly gay Americans from serving in the U.S. armed forces. On June 26, 2015, the Supreme Court finally and officially declared a same-sex marriage a constitutional right nationwide. You will see. All states must allow Americans. You will see a nation that's valuing and cherishing these families as we build a, a more perfect union. Decision. A union in which that left gay a lasting impact are around the world. Part. I am in May 2016, Obama's administration, will continue administration fighting to announced they would be preparing to designate There's no New more York's Stonewall Inn the site of the historic is. 1969 riots as the first ever national monument dedicated to gay rights. Andrea Jenkins, born in 1961, made history in 2017 by becoming the first openly transgender black woman elected to public office in the United States. In November 2018, more than 150 LGBT candidates were elected into office in the 2018 midterm elections, putting a historic number of queer and transgender politicians in positions of power. These decisions have changed the world, and as we move forward, we'll continue to improve gay rights and raise another generation filled with love support in a world where love always wins today's video is a little bit more serious it's not a fun diy or anything like that but i definitely think it's something that needs to be talked about and shared out in the world especially in lgbt history month um this is also anti-bullying month so i think those two things truly go hand in hand and it's very important that we bring up another generation that isn't bullied or ha harassed or put in a box unable to live their full potential because of being harassed and believing they don't have amazing possibilities that they can live up to because they do. And the only way they're going to know that is to learn about their history, their LGBT history. So, I hope you liked today's video. If you did, like it and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And leave a comment on my website at james-novotny.com. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.